Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back with your daily crypto news and analysis. And today, we're going to be talking about Ripple XRP and also Stellar Lumens or XLM. Only for a little bit of a short time because I only want to address the one thing about XLM, which is the idea is, is XRP and XLM competitors? Or is, you know, Stellar Lumens trying to come for Ripple? No. Alright, we're going to be addressing that. So overall... Uh, before we fully jump into this video, I just want to ask you guys, if you are an XLM and also an XRP holder, which one do you favor the most? Uh, and also comment down below why, right? Also, like this video if you hold either one. And also, if you guys haven't already, definitely subscribe and turn notifications on. So overall, when we refresh the overall coin market cap and we look at what's happened throughout the markets, things have been stable. XRP hasn't made you know, too many moves. Uh, XLM hasn't made too many moves either, sitting around 34 cents roughly, uh, down about 3.50%, somewhere around there. So overall, you know, we're seeing a lot of updates happening from Stellar. We're also seeing a lot of updates happen from Ripple, but there's a lot of things to, to really talk about, and I'm going to get into it. So first and foremost, we talk about a reminder that XRP and XLM are not competing. And here is Alex Holmes uh, clearly simplifying this. So listen closely. Why did you feel Stellar is a better fit than Ripple? Uh, you know, the, the, the Ripple product was very, very different, right? We were doing a lot of backend, um, you know, F foreign exchange trading cross border. Um, I think as we've said, you know, many times, um, you know, the, the process uh, and the technology worked uh, and we had a, uh, you know, great experience uh, with Ripple. You know, they tend to focus on a lot of the backend pieces. They're obviously focused uh, quite a bit on cross border um, funds flow through, you know, through RippleNet. Um, you know, with, with the changes and the challenge that the SEC put forward, it was very difficult for us to continue in that relationship based on uh, the way that that was structured. And so we both agreed to, to move on. Um, the, you know, the partnership here with, with Stellar is very, very different. It's much more focused on, you know, the front end consumer uh, and the ability to, uh, to interoperate between, you know, fiat and, and the stable coins. So um, a very uh, partnership, um, you know, Stellar approached us with the idea. We thought it was a great one. Uh, you know, again, MoneyGram wants to be very proactive and, and very progressive in, in, you know, in innovation and pushing forward across blockchain um, and thinking about how we can bridge between, you know, the two different worlds. So we're excited about it, and I think it's a great partnership. And there you guys have it. So overall, when we're talking about these two assets that are completely focused on two completely different niche audiences, first off, and also markets, when we talk about XLM on this channel, I've always said, you know, P2P, retail demand, that's basically the end game for uh, Stellar Lumens or XLM. Then we also talk about XRP, right? XRP demanding for B2B payments, banking sectors, ODL services, stuff like that. That's the end game for Ripple and XRP. Uh, you know, it's just to really kind of replace Swift entirely, if you will, or just make it more efficient through the ODL service. Uh, XLM, we've discussed, you know, MoneyGram itself, this is Alex Holmes, you know, CEO of MoneyGram talking, so he's even discussing himself, and you know, it's just the idea of, you know, bridging fiat to, to crypto, and, and that's the end goal for, you know, Stellar Lumens or XLM as well, you know, it's more so for retail and normie investors, if you will, but... They also have B2B and CBDC adoption happening there, but it's not as inclusive as Ripple as we do know Ripple has 300 plus financial institutions and pretty much banks, 38 banks out of the top 100 banks uh, already you know, signed up to be utilizing XRP technology or Ripple technology, I should say. So yeah, I mean, XRP and XLM, they're not competitors at all, in my opinion. That's just uh, from my standpoint here. And Alex Holmes pretty much clarifies that as well. So there you guys have it. Now, Moving on, we do see a Ripple first company on the planet Earth, which has built next level technology, send money without internet, 24, you know, seven limitless, no QR codes and now pay later. Now, I wish that they would have added the ODL service here because that's patent technology. That's game changing. I think that the ODL service is like the that's basically like the, you know, massive amount of money for them like that. That's pretty much the money pit, if you will, for you know, Ripple and XRP, I, th I think that that's going to be the one that really kind of, you know, shines out of all of these massive use cases behind Ripple and the XRP and the XRP ledger, right? So when we're talking about ODO, I think that ODO is a massive game changer. I think that that has the potential to move trillions of dollars, you know, a year, uh, upwards of quadrillions of dollars, which we discussed multiple times on this channel. And uh, I think that that's going to be unlocking the true potential behind Ripple, RippleNet, and also XRP itself. So I, I wish that they would have added that to this. I think that that patent technology is game-changing. Now, 
Let's talk about Flare and Songbird. So we do see our Flare Songbird tokens now integrated by institutional grade custody, right? First ever industry level service for corporate clients integrates Songbird by Flare Networks. This is talking about Copper. Do see our Copper, a leading digital assets custody provider focused on institutions, shared the details of its uh, latest assets range expansion. Why is this a step crucial for massive adoption of Songbird and Song uh, SGB, if you will? So it is here, according to the official announcement shared by Copper team on its Twitter account, it has massively expanded the suite of assets, uh, or suit of assets, sorry, available for custody and transfers. In a bumper release, Copper is expanding its list of supported assets with an additional 61 ERC, 20 tokens, 25 BSC tokens, Mango Markets on Solana, and Songbird from Splare Networks. This industry is now, or I should say this brings the total number of supported assets to an industry leading 350 plus which is very interesting to see. And I did not mean to open that. But overall, when we're talking about this, right, we've talked about how Songbird and Flare Networks could be huge for the XRP ecosystem in regards to the XRP ledger. But we've talked about Flare, right? Flare is that massive airdrop token going back to December of 2020. If you were holding it before, the, I think it was like December 12th, I believe. Yes, uh, December 12th then you will be getting Flare and Songbird for free. Now, these are two massive, you know, high-grade tokens that I think are great for long-term holding. Uh, I think that Flare itself has the potential to really kind of, you know, usurp uh, the Ethereum network. And I think that that is the end game goal here. So I think that that is very interesting to see overall, but I think that this is great as well. Now, we do see here Ripple calls uh, negligence as SEC seeks $1.38 billion from XRP. Now, I've discussed this uh, prior where they were, they wanted like a massive amount as well. I think it was like, I think it might have been like $7 billion. It, it was uploaded like about like three weeks ago. And now it's down to about $1.38 billion, which I still think is absolutely massive. Um, and this is good coming from those, you know, same contracts, uh, yet says it can't be bothered to actually read them. Ripple has filed letter in opposition to the SEC's request to avoid responding to nearly 30,000 requests for admission. Again, when we're talking about this, I think that this is absolutely hilarious to think about. You know, they want $1.38 billion. We do see here the RFAs concern critical facts that defendants believe are not genuinely disputed. Truthfully, admis admissions by the SEC will therefore significantly narrow the issuers for trial. Uh, the SEC does not seriously argue about the RFAs are irrelevant. Instead, it focus, focuses almost exclusively on the sheer number of RFAs to argue that they are unduly burdensome. This is triply wrong. So when we're talking about this, you know, I, I think that the SEC is extremely reaching throughout this entire case. We're talking about $1.38 billion in revenue ge generated by Ripple from those exact same contracts yes says it can't be bothered to actually read them because these are uh we just hear that contention puts centrally at issue the express terms of more than 1700 separate contracts yet the sec now complains that it would be unduly burdensome to require the sec to review the contracts it alleges are unlawful securities offerings so they don't even want to read what they were essentially saying that are securities so isn't this Funny that the SEC failed to review these these contracts before alleging in its complaint that every single one of them was part of a course of unlawful conduct. I don't know. In my opinion, the SEC is just falling apart in regards to their argument against Ripple and XRP. And uh, when we look at things like this, you know, Vitalik Buterin sold 500,000 Ethereum to Mike Novogratz for 99 cents each. That is comical to me. Now... In regards to this, this is essentially, you know, going back to the security offerings that XRP and Ripple essentially had. I do want to talk to you guys about this. So we do see October 22nd. Guys, we are very, very close. I mean, we're talking about 14 days away. This could be huge, guys. Nice. Judge Netburn orders the SEC to submit relevant documents and to fulfill other requests by October 22nd. Guys. This is huge. Now, we do see here, 1-3, Judge Nepburn orders the SEC to submit for in-camera review the two documents related to the SEC's meetings with law firms and the email chain concerning discussions with a third party who received guidance from the SEC. To analyze its digital asset under the framework set forth in Hinman's June 14, 2018 speech, 
The SEC must also submit an explanation for its privilege assertions for all of those documents no later than October 15th. The SEC must also file a redacted version of its submission on the public docket. Defendant's response is due no later than October 22nd. Judge Nepper and his order in the SEC to give her the documents related to XRP took her long enough, but at least she's finally taken action. This sounds great. We do see her. I think that Judge Nepper has the patience of a saint. The SEC is, and you guys already know, right? So when we're talking about this, this could get very, very interesting as we do talk about settlements. We talk about this entire SEC case. We've been talking about it for ever now, right? We go back, you know, 10 months. This has been an incredible time, but we do see here, right? The th when we're talking about these major documents, the descriptions of these three documents are, first off, to relate to meetings the SEC had with law firms to discuss unprecedented confusion in the markets regarding the SEC's view on status of digital assets under the federal securities laws. And then the third is an email chain concerning discussions with the third party whom defendants understand received guidance from the SEC to analyze its digital assets under the framework set forth in Director William Hinman's June 14th, 2018 speech. Because this could get very interesting within those, right? Because when we're talking about this, this could include Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP. This could be those documents that we've been waiting for forever. And from what I'm seeing, they are. So this could be detrimental to the Ripple SEC case. I am very, very excited to see what is going to be happening because if we win this lawsuit, if this lawsuit gets thrown out the door uh, after this date, right? Because we already know that there's many dates to look forward to even in November. We go back to this tweet here. Remember when the SEC launched their lawsuit against XRP? The entire crypto space took a huge hit. All coins were down 20 to 40% a day for multiple days. If the SEC loses or settles the case, and that's looking likely, the opposite will happen. Imagine how insane the pumps will be. And that is the case for the major catalyst event that could happen. With that being said, guys, I hope that you all enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on. If you guys do want more paid content, I do have the Ultimate Crusader Trading Bundle Pack for $55.99. All future content will be added into this bundle pack for free for all those who purchase it now. This price will increase as more and more products are released on the store. If you guys do want to see all those crypto insights, all those you know major products that I have on the store, there is a ton of them and there's many, many more to come to this website. So if you guys are interested in that, the website is ncashofficial.com. But with that being said, I hope that you all have a beautiful day or beautiful night. Wherever you guys are, this has been Nick. Peace out, guys.